the Mansfield Mantinar 40mm f2.8 is the lens that came with the Mansfield iTronic, a fixed lens auto exposure camera that was made in Japan and released on the market in 1962. Mansfield Industries was based in the United States and was around for only about a decade, from mid-1950s to mid-1960s. During its short existence, the company distributed mainly movie cameras and projectors, but it released a few still cameras as well. Mansfield didn't actually make any of these cameras, but instead contracted Japanese manufacturers, such as Mamiya, to make products under their name. In this case, the Mansfield iTronic is actually a Mamiya EE Merit. Mamiya made the camera for Mansfield and only swapped the names. This Mamiya camera was distributed in the United States under one more name, the Honeywell Electric Eye 35. Honeywell was another American company that used Japanese manufacturers to make products for them. All three cameras were designed and made by Mamiya in Japan and they all have the same 40mm f2.8 lens. The sole difference between all three is simply their names. The aperture of this lens ranges from f2.8 to f22 with click stops in between. It accepts filters with 49mm diameter. The diaphragm is made of four rounded aperture blades. On the back this lens is quite different. Once I removed it from the iTronic camera it had no mount whatsoever. But adapting it to digital is pretty easy. I used an M42 to M52 step up ring and an M42 to NEX 13 to 18mm focusing helicoid. First I had to sand down the step up ring about 1mm so I can reach infinity and once I had the necessary thickness I super glued it to the back of the lens. When the glue was dry I simply screwed the lens to the focusing helicoid and I was ready to use it on my Sony camera. The lens with the step up ring and the focusing helicoid weighs 188 grams. When this lens was part of the Mansfield iTronic, it had a pretty unremarkable minimum focusing distance of 1 meter. But when adapted to Sony a7 III, in the way I just described, the minimum focusing distance shrinks down to only 28 centimeters. The Mansfield Mantinar 40mm f2.8 is one quirky little lens that is full of character and I'm really glad that I decided to adapt it to digital. As the title of the video suggests, this lens is best suited for using a cropped sensor because the crop factor eliminates the main culprit of this lens, and that is softness along the corners when shot at infinity on full frame. The crop sensor perfectly eliminates the problem with the edges and makes this lens a great companion even for landscape shots. The interesting thing is that this lens is actually really sharp, especially when used for close-up photography. Center sharpness is excellent, even wide open, and by f8 it produces results that are quite remarkable for a tiny lens from the early 60s. One of my favorite features about this lens is that when shot wide open, it produces gorgeous round bokeh balls, but when stopped down, the autofocus lights become square, which is super unusual and awesome. I know that this look might not be for everyone, but I personally love the weird checkered background blur as in this praying mantis shot. I don't have any other lens that could do this kind of stuff. In some situations the bokeh even has a bit of a swirl, which is another feature that I like. This lens also produces grey colors. They are on the warmer side of the spectrum and have excellent saturation and contrast. Surprisingly, ghosting and flare are not an issue and distortion is basically non-existent. There's some very minor color fringing, but only visible in extreme lighting conditions. So all in all, even though this lens does not have a fancy brand name, and it doesn't come from an expensive camera, it can still produce some really great images. I actually like this lens so much that I ended up buying another iTronic camera to have as a spare. Yes, this lens is not perfect, but I don't use vintage lenses because I hope to find the perfect one, Quite the contrary, I like trying out super weird lenses from forgotten brands that have unusual rendering and are full of character, and that's what this lens is. If you're wondering how this lens performs as a video lens, 
Here is a short test clip that I shot with it at f2.8. As you can see, the sharpness wide open is pretty astonishing and the background simply melts away. For those of you who would like to adapt this quirky little lens, I decided to put together a few notes that will help you with this do-it-yourself project. First, you need to get one of these cameras, which can be found for super cheap on eBay, especially if they do not work or are sold for parts. I got mine for only $15. Then you need to take out the two screws that are on the bottom of the camera. There is one on the right and one on the left. Once you remove the two screws, the bottom plate simply comes off. Now you have to peel away the black fabric which is glued to the front of the camera. Underneath it are four screws that need to be removed because they hold the lens plate attached to the body of the camera. If you have a hard time removing the screws, here's a little tip that might help you. I used some nail polish remover that I applied with a Q-tip on top of each screw. And after a few minutes, it was much easier to remove them. Once you have removed the four screws, then you can pull away the lens plate from the body of the camera. After that, you need to unscrew the retaining ring on the back, which will release the lens from the plate. Now, the only thing that's holding the lens are the two wires. Simply cut the two wires and the lens is yours. The next step is to open up the shutter. As you can see, there is a lever over here in the groove on the right and a lever in the groove on the left side. The lever on the right cocks the shutter and you do that by pushing it up, just like that. And now by pushing the lever on the left, the shutter is released, which means that the shutter opens up for a fraction of a second and closes back up again. But because we want it to stay permanently open, we need to put something in the groove on the right to prevent the shutter from closing. I use just a piece of paper that I folded a few times and I cut to size. So all you need to do is push the lever on the right up to cock the shutter. Then take the folded piece of paper, insert it in the groove, just like that. But make sure there is a little bit of space between the lever and the piece of paper. And now when you push the lever on the left, the shutter opens up, but does not close back up again. And that's what we want. Now you can use the aperture just like any other lens, and you're good to go. And the last step is to sand down the step up ring so you can reach infinity, super glue to the back of the lens, like I showed you earlier, mount it to the focusing helicoid, and you're ready to use this wonderful vintage lens on your mirrorless camera. If you have any questions about this project, don't hesitate to ask. I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time here at Vintage Optics.